I'm Nathan, and welcome to Stories with a Twang. Today's episode is called, I work at a small town McDonald's. My manager makes us follow a strange set of rules by Horror Junkie 123. I'll have a number four meal with extra cheese, two Big Macs with a large fry, three apple pies, and a shamrock shake. All right, Stan, your total comes out to 46.50. The Landwell grunted approvingly as he shoved a greasy wad of crumpled bills into Gary's outstretched palm. Here's your change. I'll call your number when it's ready. Stan trundled away to await his late night snack as Gary and I prepared the food. Geez, man, does he have a family waiting at home or something? I whispered as Gary shoveled fries into a red and yellow box. Blair, does that man look like he's got a wife and kids? Stan is one of our regulars. You'll see him pretty often if you stick with the night shift. I grimaced as I prepared the shake. Great, lucky me. Hey, it could be a lot worse. Honestly, Stan is the least of your worries, he said as a shudder rippled through his body. We processed the remainder of the food in silence. Gary and I then shuffled to the counter, each donning a full tray. Stan, orders up, Gary exclaimed as the boulder of a man darted at an alarming speed to retrieve his sodium-rich smorgasbord. He snatched the trays from us, hurriedly ambling back to his corner table. I watched in astonishment as the man inhaled his meal. Hey, could you help me sweep in the back? Best to do it now before any more customers. Gary was interrupted by an obnoxiously loud alarm blaring from his pocket. Stan looked up at him, glaring at the unwelcome ringing. Sorry, gotta take this, he said, darting to the kitchen and out of view. He returned a moment later. All the color had drained from his face. He appeared sickly like he'd suddenly caught a nasty case of the flu. That was my Aunt Norma. She she said my parents were in a car wreck. Apparently my mom is in critical condition. He stared off into space, his brain slowly processing the tragic information it had just received. Gary, I'm so sorry. Do you need me to call someone? He snapped out of his trance, tears brimming in the corners of his eyes. He quickly wiped them away. No, I'll be fine. Okay, but with all due respect, what are you still doing here? Go be with your family, dude. I can handle closing up on my own. He locked eyes with me, a stern determination creeping over his countenance. You're right. I need to go. Here, t- take my key to the restaurant. There's a list of rules in Dave's office. Go read them the first chance you get. You need to follow them to a T, no matter how ridiculous they sound. Got it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take care of it. Now go! I said as Gary handed me a small silver object. He sprinted out the front door, letting it slam shut behind him. I fashioned Gary's drive through headset below my hat and headed to the back to familiarize myself with the nighttime protocols. I laboriously pushed open the door to Dave's office. you think that the thing was made from solid gold with how heavy it was. I surveyed my surroundings, my eyes immediately falling to the life-size portrait beaming back at me. Really, Dave? Even I'm not that self-absorbed. I muttered, continuing my search. I defaulted to the pockmarked bulletin board to my right. There they were, posted clear as day. I swiftly scanned over them. Rules for the night shift. Number one, you are allowed a seven-minute grace period, no exceptions. Number two, if a hooded figure knocks at the drive-thru window, do not answer it. Stay out of its direct line of sight and it will leave. Number three, if Stan claims that you forgot his pickles, offer him a free complimentary chocolate shake. If he refuses, lock yourself in the office and call Dave. Number four, no outside food or drink. Number five, if a blood-like substance begins seeping from under the grill, mop it up until it stops. No, it is not blood. Number six, an old woman in a shawl will come in at exactly ten minutes past one. Avoid looking at her for too long. She will not leave until you ask her where Tony is. Number seven, 
If a small child appears telling you he lost his mother, ignore him. He does not have good intentions. Number eight. You are required to comply with the employee dress code. Speak to management if you need clarification on what is acceptable. Number nine. If you are alone and you feel the undeniable sensation of being watched, lock yourself in the office immediately and wait for it to dissipate. Number 10. The store closes at 2 a.m. Before you clock out, place two packages of raw burgers on the stove. Number 11. Always leave the restaurant by 2.37 a.m. The Hamburglar doesn't like company. And number 12. Failure to adhere to these rules will result in immediate termination. Do not hesitate to call Dave if you have any questions or concerns. Dave's phone number was hastily scrawled at the bottom of the page. I stared at the list, unsure of what to make of it. Was this some sort of cruel prank on the newbie? Maybe Gary was in on it. I resolved to wait and find out for myself, and I made my way back to the counter. Upon seeing me approach, Stan rapidly stood from his seat and sidled up to me. Can I help you with something? Yeah, you forgot my pickles. I mentally rolled my eyes. Gary hadn't been gone for ten minutes and the fun was already ramping up. Look, I watched my co-worker make those. I know he didn't... I began before rule three crept into my head. I mean, I'm sorry. I can offer you a free shake for the inconvenience. His four chins flapped as he fervently shook his head. No, I don't want any more food. There is another way you can make it up to me, though. A malicious grin inched across his face. A blanket of fear sent adrenaline bursting through my veins. I'm 16, sir. If you really think that's not what I meant, you dumb broad, I want a refund. What? No, you already ate it all. Fine, if you won't give me my money back, I'll have to take it from you. The massive mound of flesh began waddling to meet me behind the counter. I fled to the back, praying he wouldn't catch me. I glanced behind me as I struggled to push open the absurdly heavy office door. Stan was barreling toward me, sending shelves of product crashing to the ground. My heart thumped against my ribcage so hard that it hurt. I had just managed to slip through the door and slam it shut when he reached it. He pounded his ape-like fists against the sturdy metal frame, shouting obscenities at me all the while. I'll get you, you little whore. You can't stay in there forever. He was right. I instantly ripped the yellowing piece of paper from the board and punched in Dave's number. He picked up after an agonizingly long minute of waiting. Hello. This better be good. I value my beauty sleep. Dave, it's Dan. The free shake didn't work. I'm trapped in the office. Dave sighed. All right, put it on speaker and hold your phone up to the door so you can hear me. I obliged, clenching my cracked iPhone 7 with a vice grip and sticking it close to the rattling door. Stan, Stan, can you hear me? It's Dave. The room fell eerily silent. Oh, yeah. What's up, Davey? Stan, are you harassing one of my employees again? I don't need to get Mrs. Barrett on the phone, do I? No, 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 please. I'll behave, I swear. Please, just don't call her. His voice trembled as he spoke. I don't know, that's what you said last time. I promise, I'll never bother her again. Come on, Davey, show a little compassion. Dave took a moment to respond. All right, but I need you to go home and you need to apologize to Mrs. Blake for scaring her. Blair, I interjected, face palming myself. Right, Uh, apologize to Blair and I'll let you off the hook. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Sorry, Blaze. So, um, can I take you up on that free shake? No, Stan. No free shake tonight. I need you to leave. Dave said, a stern finality in his statement. Without another word, Stan angrily tromped through the kitchen and out the front door. I didn't release my breath until I heard it shut behind him. Thanks, Dave. Anytime, kid. In my experience, threatening to call his mother is a decent deterrent for an overgrown man-baby. I chuckled, sensing the tension disperse. I'm gonna get back to bed now. Good luck tonight. And with that, he abruptly hung up. I sat for a moment, controlling my breathing in order to steady my palpitating heart, before returning to my duties. I trudged into the kitchen and begrudgingly got to work cleaning the mess of boxes and condiments that Stan had strewn throughout the area. 
I had just put the final ketchup bottle in its place when out of the corner of my eye, I saw it. A figure was standing at the drive through window. I immediately tensed up, every muscle in my body freezing in place. It glared at me, yellow glowing eyes piercing the darkness. It raised a gloved fist and knocked lightly on the thin glass. The sound freed me from my stupor. Rule two, I dashed to the counter and crouched behind it. Hugging my knees to my chest, ice flooded my veins as the knocking grew louder. The window shook in its frame as the light knock soon escalated to rapid pounding. I squeezed my eyes shut, terrified at the notion that the slim barrier to the outside world wouldn't hold. The constant noise assaulted my eardrums, crashing against them like thunder during a storm. The knocking crescendoed into a fever pitch of resounding slams, just when I thought that I might lose my sanity. It stopped. I glanced up in the midst of the unsettling silence I found myself in. It was gone. As if the entity had never appeared in the first place, I gradually stood and took my time getting my bearings. I hesitantly peeked around the corner at the drive through Nothing. Not so much as a scratch on the glass. I glanced down at my phone. 12.15 a.m. Less than two hours. I could handle it. Right? I began sweeping like Gary was beginning to ask me to do prior to his receiving his unfortunate news. I was thankful for a break in the action. I didn't know how much more I could take. Apparently, I could take a lot more, as I came to find out. Alright everyone, I hope you all enjoyed this week's story. I would like to give a giant thank you to this week's author, Horror Junkie123. I'll be back real soon with part 2 of this story. If you have any stories you would like me to read on the show, you can send them over to storieswithatwang at gmail.com. The show is on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at storieswithatwang podcast. It would mean an awful lot if you could rate and review the show wherever you listen, and don't forget to share with your friends and family as well. It could really help the show grow. I hope you all have a wonderful week, and until next time, remember that a little twang goes a long way. <laughs>